Hi, Martin here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a great free graphic design app for Mac. This is a fantastic alternative to paid expensive softwares like Adobe Illustrator. So I'm gonna show you how to get it, and then give you an overview of the basics so you can start designing straight away. So let's get started. So obviously you're gonna be wondering, what is this free graphic design software? Well, it's a piece of software called Vectinator. It's on Mac and it can be downloaded straight from the App Store. So we're gonna head into the App Store and we're gonna do a search for Vector and then you'll start to see it come up here, okay? So V-E-C-T-O-R-N-A-T-O-R. -O -O now you'll see the first result come up here. So Vectinator Vector Design slash Art. So we'll go ahead and click on here and you can see it's got exceptionally high ratings uh, and it's actually one of the uh, editor's choice apps on the App Store. So graphic design reimagined, powerful vector brushes, uh, content aware tools, in-app upsplash library. So some of this might make sense to you, some of it might not, but essentially it's got a whole host of features for what is a free application. So Vectinate themselves describe it as a revolutionary design platform, empowers graphic designers, marketing designers, and illustrators to visualize their ideas. From beautiful illustrations and graphic layouts to striking logos and lettering, you can do it all with Vectinate's powerful tools and features. So big claims, but I have to admit, I've played around with the software quite a lot and it's very, very good. So go ahead, um, you'll have a Git button here to install the software. So go ahead, install the software, and then once it's downloaded, go ahead and open it up. Okay, so once your Vectinator is open, it will likely uh, load you straight into this Welcome to Vectinator um, document that will take you through some of the basics. So it, you can see here it's showing you things like the erase tool, duplicate, brush tool, and things like that. So we'll, in a second, we'll create a new document and we'll go through some of the basic tools. But kind of firstly, I just want to talk about the interface of Vectinator. So there's a few different sections. We have the top toolbar. We have this over on the left-hand side. We have our bar over on the right-hand side. And then we have our document here in the middle. So we'll start on this top toolbar. So this essentially shows the tools that are most used, okay? And you can also, if you control click, you can click on customize toolbar and you can specify what tools you want on your custom toolbar. So things that you're using all the time, you can put them up here and then you know exactly where they are and they're easy to access. You then have the style inspector over here on the right hand side of the screen. And this is where a lot of the tools and features you'll be using are. So when you create shapes, this is where you can then arrange where they are. You can add the color and there's a whole host of different uh, path options, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, you then have the layers section over on the left hand side. So this obviously shows all the different layers of your document so you can select which layer you want to be editing. And then lastly is the toolbar. So this is just inside from the layers bar here, and this is where you can select what tools you want to use, whether it be the shape tool, um, brush, pen, etc. So a very simple interface, an interface that's not totally unlike some of the Adobe software, so it's a great place to get started. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new document. So we're going to go to File at the top, we're going to go to New, and I'm going to create a new A4 document and click Create. So I'm going to go ahead, close that previous tutorial window, and I'm just going to expand the size. So one thing to note, um, your document itself in the middle can be moved around by using two fingers on the trackpad. And then obviously I like to kind of get it central, and then you can pinch and zoom to get it where you would like. So I'll pinch and zoom a bit and get that a little bit closer. So most of the basics that you'll need to know with Vectinator, we can kind of demonstrate uh, using shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have my rectangle tool here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my rectangle. 
Now, you might notice my rectangle doesn't look that rectangle-like. It's actually got quite curved edges, and I can even get it looking like a circle. So that's using this tool here. So this cogwheel, if we click this, we have a slider. So if I slide this all the way to the bottom where you'll see a more square shape, and then draw my rectangle again, you can see it looks a little bit more like a traditional rectangle. Whereas if I go all the way up to the top, you'll see that I've got essentially a circle. So that's where we can utilize kind of the rounded edges of our shape. So once we've got our shapes, we can go back to this select tool up here. I can click on and I can change the size the way that we normally would. Um, if we wanna keep the proportions so over here, because obviously you can see when I'm changing, sometimes it's not staying in the same proportions with the width and the height. So if I hold shift and do the same thing, it will keep the same proportion. So width and height will always be in the same proportions with each other, okay? You can also use this orange at the top to circle our shapes, okay? So um, all pretty straightforward. So we can circulate our shapes here. Again, I can resize. I can overlap them there if I need to. Um, so one other thing that's worth noting is if you just hold the option key, that's how we can duplicate. So we don't have to do command C, command V or copy paste. I can literally hold the option key, click my shape, drag it out, and then I've got a duplicate copy of that shape, okay? So you can see that my arrows turned into that plus icon when I press the option key. So I can do that and duplicate my shape. Lastly, when it just comes to with that movement and size and manipulation, if we click on this direct selection tool, you can see we can actually click different points now and we can actually manipulate our shape to look a little bit different, okay? All right, so that's essentially how we move it around. We rotate, we can keep proportions, we can change proportions, we can duplicate. So all of the basic tools that you're gonna need. Now, um, a couple of other things to note. So with our shapes, we can quite easily change the color um, over here in the style inspector. So you can already see here, I've got this pink color as a fill. So I can go ahead and change that to green. I can change the stroke color, which is the outline. I can change that over to more of a red. Okay, so really easy, really straightforward. We can also adjust the um, opacity of a shape. So if I click on the shape and then use this slider, it will show how essentially see-through or not see-through it may be. So the final thing that I'd like to go through is looking at these path tools here. So this is a pretty cool feature. So if we take a shape and I'm just going to have these shapes kind of overlapping. And then the key thing with the path is we want to select both. So click and drag over the two shapes and then these path tools will be highlighted. You'll know if you've done it or not because if they're not both selected, then you can't use these path tools. So these path tools allow us to combine these shapes in various different ways. So if I click on the first one, this just adds them together. So essentially now I've just got one shape and you'll see it takes the properties of whatever shape is on top. So here my pink and blue rectangle, if I combine them, the other shape takes on those properties as well. So if we go ahead and select the second one, you can see it take the shape that's on top and just cut it out from the shape below. If we go to the third option here, so this actually takes everything outside and just keeps the part that overlaps. And then we've got the third one here and you might think, well, hang on, nothing's happened. That line's appeared again, but that doesn't really do anything. However, what that's actually done is kind of change them into separate little puzzle pieces. So quite a cool feature there as well. And then finally, we've got the last one, which will just delete the intersection of all the shapes. So look, there you have it. That's a very brief rundown of Vectinator, but hopefully that's enough for you to be able to jump in and start having a play around and having a go with the uh, software. I highly recommend giving it a go. Like I said, it's completely and utterly free. So you've got nothing to lose downloading and trying it. Um, and look, if this uh, video is popular, then I can jump on and I can show you a whole host of the other tools available in the software. So if it has been useful, please like the video, comment below and subscribe.